everybody, welcome back to my channel. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Today's video is actually my most requested over on my Instagram polls. So if you don't already follow me on Instagram, make sure to head on over there because that's where you'll sort of get your say on what sort of videos you want me to post, uh, what sort of things you find helpful and stuff like that. Because I'm looking sort of to post more polls like the ones I did last time because I find them really helpful to know what sort of videos to post so yes make sure to head on over and follow me on Instagram my links and stuff will be down below and I'll put it up on the screen now. Today's video is going to be my top tips on how to travel on a budget because obviously I'm a student and I work 12 hours a week so I don't have unlimited funds to travel the world but I love to travel I love holidays and stuff like that and I am definitely one for the more extravagant sort of things like we went to Italy last summer for 10 days traveled around Italy and then this summer we're going to Greece for 18 or 19 days also guys I just want to add in here that our Greece trip for 18 days is costing us 1300 pound each and the Contiki trip for Greek island hopping which let me just check it here it is for 15 days and it costs 2318 pounds and they don't stay in Ia or anything, they stay out of Ia, they stay in Syria, I think. So yeah, it's just possible to travel for a lot less than what is mostly advertised. So I'm just going to share with you some of my top tips for travelling on a budget. Okay, so my first tip is one for when you've already booked your holiday and it is to bring scales. I have like a wee mini set of weighing scales that I bring with me every time I go on holidays. I just put them in my either my hand luggage or my suitcase and they're just great because oh my goodness it's snowing outside. Uh, right anyway bring a set of scales with you because you don't want to be coming to the airport after your holiday to have to pay like a crazy luggage fee because you're a kilogram over your luggage or whatever. So yes, definitely bring a set of scales with you that you can weigh your luggage before heading to the airport. Tip number two is to follow Facebook pages and stuff like Holiday Pirates and Travel Guru and stuff like that are great for finding cheaper like package holidays and stuff like that. It is hard being from Northern Ireland because flights and stuff tend to be more expensive because we're a smaller country but you can find good sort of transfer flights as well so if you fly to say London or Scotland or something like that you can get that quite cheap and then be able to fly from there to wherever you want to go at a much cheaper rate. You can find great holidays like that on sites like Holiday Pirates and Travel Guru and they're just great. Facebook pages and they're so easy easy to use and I'll leave a couple of links down below to Facebook pages like that that you can use to find great holidays. Okay so my third tip is to use compare websites like Expedia, Booking.com, TripAdvisor, stuff like that but with them you also have to be quite careful because you can end up with places that just aren't great. If you put in your budget and don't put in anything else you'll maybe find a hotel and you'll think it looks great but then you go and you know it's just not what you expected so what I recommend is putting in your filters four plus four star plus reviews four star plus reviews and also look at the map as well so if there's especially we were going to Santorini and I was determined I was we have to say an Oya or Ia or however you say it I'm not really 100% sure but I was so certain that we had to say an Oya, Ia, oh my goodness um, and so I searched on the map and then I put my four star plus reviews and I put in my budget and I was able to narrow it down and found a great hotel for £175 per night in Ia and there's a pool and everything which is unreal because a lot of the places there are just crazy expensive like a thousand pounds plus per night and we found this great place which is so central and has a pool great reviews for 175 pound per night and another thing i would say is make sure there is at least 50 to 100 plus reviews because some of them could be 
bias. Some of them could be written by people who know the ones who own that hotel, so just be careful with stuff like that. My third tip is to use flight comparison sites as well, like Skyscanner and Google Flights, because that's where you are gonna find the best deals. If you're not too fussy on where you wanna go, Skyscanner, you can put in where you're flying from and then just put everywhere and it'll bring up the best prices and dates and locations and stuff like that and you can just choose where you want to go. Another thing is to be quite flexible with your dates because on sites like Skyscanner and on Google Flights it'll tell you you could save 70 pounds if you fly. Say, you, say you've put in you want to fly on a Sunday and it'll say if you fly on the Monday you could save 70 pounds. So if you can be flexible with when you're flying definitely I would recommend to do that. My fourth tip was actually just yeah be flexible with your dates and if you're a student it's always better to sort of fly on sort of off peak times and I, I like to fly towards the end of summer one because the places aren't going to be as warm and they'll still be warm enough warmer than here with its snow <laughs> um, but they won't be like overwhelmingly hot that someone like me and Adam as well can deal with and it's great for if you want to get new holiday outfits because we sort of fly late August, September and that's when all the summer clothes are going to be reduced so that means I save money on my clothes as well as on the flights because obviously schools and stuff are back so yeah. So my fifth tip is to not be so fussy about staying in hotels. You can find great places like Airbnbs and hostels like when we travelled around Italy we just stayed in Airbnbs and in hostels and Honestly, it was better than spending all that time in a hotel. And if you're going, especially on a holiday like that, where you're not gonna be spending that much time in the room, you don't need to go for something luxury. If obviously, if that's what you're looking for, if you're looking to go on a spa break or something like that, then yes, go for a great hotel. But if you're looking to go and explore a place, then go for Airbnbs, go for hostels, but especially with Airbnbs and hostels I would definitely recommend looking at the reviews going for I think on Hostel World it's out of 10 so if you go for I always try and go for eight or seven and a half and up and then I sort of read read through the reviews and with Airbnbs as well I like them to be full five stars for everything like four and a half stuff like that I don't like them to drop too much but you can find great Airbnbs at really central locations for way cheaper than you could get a hotel and honestly it's more private as well. I would recommend if you are someone who does value more privacy go for make sure you're staying somewhere where you're getting an entire place rather than a room in someone's house because that's something I learned when we were traveling around Italy. We the first two places we stayed we were just in a private room living with people and it wasn't really for us like it's okay like it wasn't bad it, it was good like it was a great experience and they were there to be really helpful but the last few places we stayed we had our own private room like we had the entire place to ourselves, and that was just so much nicer and not that much more expensive like honestly it's around the same price and I also have a link where you can get £25 or $35 off your first Airbnb trip and I'll leave that down below if you want to use that Okay, so I just realised I got my numbers all mixed up there, but anyway, I'll have it up on the screen anyway, you'll know what tips what. But anyway, my seventh tip, I think it is now, is to check your accommodation perks before you go, because you can find really great things that maybe they won't have displayed straight away. For things like if they offer free transfers, if you can get... A breakfast for a certain amount rather like because you'll save money when you're there with not eating out and if you're if you pay if you prepay for your breakfast and dinner and lunch and stuff like that and just different stuff like that just check if there's any way you can prepay for stuff like that because it will work out cheaper than paying when you're there also check their websites for different things like if they offer guidance on passes and buses and stuff to take like that because that's always very useful and see what they're like for giving advice but yes definitely just check your accommodation perks before you go. So my tip number eight is to use Quidco. It is an amazing 
app website I love using it and if you go on basically it's a cashback app and it has so many different things on it it's not just for travel you can use it for literally anything like i think there's websites like boohoo and stuff on there which i've used it for and yeah so basically this is the app here this is what it looks like and you just go into categories down here and then down to travel and then you just go in i don't know how well you can see this yes there we go and this is all the websites that are on Quidco where you can get cash back and I'll just read you some of them out here so obviously I'll read out the more popular ones there's hotels.com on here you can get up to 14% cash back lastminute.com you can get up to 11% cash back um, Travelzoo 6% Skyscanner 10p cash back okay some of them are a bit stupid but there's some of them that are actually really really good like you can get up to there's trusted house sitters 20% cash back there's, I've seen other ones 25% cash back and if you're paying say 300 pound for your flights you're getting a lot of money back there which you can obviously then spend on other things there's some great things for travel insurance on here as well um booking.com I'm pretty sure is on here Expedia is on here so yeah just I would, oh, there's TripAdvisor hotels as well. And I would just, yeah, definitely recommend getting Quidco because it's always nice getting something back from the money you've spent, especially when it's something big like a holiday. And it just helps you save a bit of money. Okay, so my ninth and final tip is definitely to do your research before you go, especially if you're going to a touristy place. Just do your research on where to eat, uh, what passes you need to get stuff like that because I went to Rome last summer with Adam and I didn't find it that expensive I found the food amazing everything was great and since I've come home loads of people are like oh did you not find Rome really expensive and I was like no I didn't but that's because I did my research before I went I looked up where's good to eat where to eat like a local in Rome um, just different stuff like that and check the prices and the reviews and all that sort of stuff so that just really helps you save money and have a better time when you're actually there hey guys so that's all of my tips that i have for traveling on a budget and i hope you find them helpful if you did make sure to give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button down there as well to see more videos like this if i have any other ideas i will make a part two and if you have any requests Make sure to head on over to my Instagram and let me know there or just comment down below telling me what sort of videos you would like to see next. Thanks a lot guys. Bye!